Blind tastings and hallmarks of key known grapes. That's what today is all about. But two things that I wanna to get to before we get into the wines and talking about what the hallmarks of those things are. I wanna first start off by saying, I recognize that this sweater I'm wearing is horrible. I know that the color does not work at all with my skin. I feel like everyone buys every now and then some piece of clothing that they know doesn't work for them or they only find out later that it was such a horrible choice that they keep it in their cupboard for a year, two years, three years, four years. They never wear it, but they just don't want to get rid of it. That's what the sweater is. And I figured I need to change my shirt every episode. All right, let's get some use out of this thing since I do not wear it. The second thing is someone asked me <clears throat> not that long ago what music I listened to running with that and just continuing to talk about what music I listen to when I'm tasting wine with friends. One of my all-time favorites, Billy Joel. This actually isn't the album that's my favorite, but uh, this is Glass House. Love Billy Joel. Usually have this on when I have friends over. This is a horrible pressing. It sounds god-awful. I've gone through three different pressings. They all sound really bad to the point where I won't even play this. This to me is a throw it in the garbage, get rid of it. 52nd Street, classic album, good pressing, like this one a lot, but my real favorite, the one that I really, really, really always come back to is The Stranger. Every song on this album is fantastic. If you're not familiar with it, go check it out. My personal favorite song is Vienna. I think it's actually the first song on side two. Yeah, it is. If you, I'm assuming most people have heard this album. If you haven't, pick this up. Go listen to it. I'll link below in the description to the song Vienna off this album. The funny thing about this album actually is that most people know most of the songs. You just may not realize that you know every song until you hear it and then you go, yeah, of course I know that song. Billy Joel, great guy, have yet to see him live. Need to make that trip to New York with my mom, go to concert with her, that would be special and very nice and she would like it a lot. Notice I say that in kind of a voice. Anyway, it actually would be special. I just, you know, sometimes hard spending time with your mom. Uh, love her, but you know, sons and mothers, you, you can't admit that you like her, not to her face. So we've got four grapes today. Let's get down to business. And first, actually, let's talk about blind tests, blind tastes, blind tasting tests. It didn't really work, whatever. Why is it important to do blind tests? Well, I find for me that it really forces you to think about what you're smelling and it forces you to think about what you're tasting. And even if you guess every single one wrong, you start building profiles around what you think it might be. And then when there's the reveal, here's what it actually was, you can go, ah, I missed that or I smelt it, but I wasn't sure. Okay, taste it again. Yes, now I get that note. So if you really want to learn a grape variety or a style of winemaking or notes and just get better at refining your vocabulary, refining your, your sense of smell, it is a great, great, great way to start. And I've put down here four grapes that are really easy styles to pick out. These are, these are wines and styles that are really easy to memorize and learn, and it's a great starting point. There's a few others, but we're in white territory right now. And let's run, let's run through them. Let's talk about what makes these grapes, these grapes. And uh, check them out, do it for yourself. So the first grape we have here is um, Sauvignon Blanc, which is made in the region of Sancerre. So Sauvignon Blanc, most people are familiar with New Zealand Sauve Blancs, but if you've never tried a French Sauve Blanc, go get a bottle that says Sancerre on it. Usually they're in the low $20 mark for a bottle, but they are all of great quality. They all will show the same hallmarks of this grape and the style, how it's a little bit different in France than it would be if it were made in New Zealand. New Zealand, the, the Kim Crawfords, the Oyster Bays, um, those to me have a lot of, lot, lot of tropical fruits going on. Uh, kind of that volume knob is set to, to, set to 11. It stops at 10, but they found a way to crank it one more, one more notch up. This is a little bit more restrained. This is a little bit more subtle. So at first, if you have the two side by side, you may actually prefer the New Zealand style, but I find the more I got into wine, I actually liked kind of something a little more subtle, a little bit more balanced, a little bit more calm about the Sauve Blanc made in France. So. Hallmarks, what are you looking for? What, how do you know that this is a Sauve Blanc in the glass? Well, let's give this a smell. And of course that there's exceptions to everything that I'm gonna say and that lots of people will smell different things, but I'm just giving some kind of key touchstone. Can you pick out these rough qualities and remember that that's a Sauve Blanc? So the first thing um, that we get here is 
light in color. Sauvignon typically made unoaked. I've had a few oaked Sauvignons. One that was really cool that was a late harvest Sauvignon made in Italy. It's a whole other whole other thing that I had in New York, but so no no oak going on here. And the fruit that I'm getting a lot of and that I typically find in, in Sancerre is a lot of pink grapefruit. So kind of that sour citrus lemon and, and pink grapefruit in particular. And then there's this minerality. There's this kind of river, river stone and cut grass, something green vegetable going on here. So think about asparagus, um, maybe some green bell pepper. It's very slight, but there's some kind of cut grass greenness to this wine with this pink grapefruit. And let's see what happens on the palate. Winnie the Pooh was my absolute favorite, favorite character growing up. I'm glad that he can be part of this moment in my life. I'm sorry he got a, demo a demotion from being my favorite stuffed animal to my, my spittoon, but uh, he's still around. That's, that's got to count for something. Anyway, a lot of acidity here, lots of salivation, a lot of clean, crisp, fresh, sour fruits, lots of that pink grapefruit going on. And... One of the things that this will work really well with, if you're trying to figure out what do I pair that with, is I love cheese platters. I love having people over and putting out some cheeses. And if I think about Boursin, creamy, salty, mouth coating uh, cheese, here you've got a high acid, um, lots, lots of salivation here. That's how you see that acidity. Tons and tons and tons of salivation. All I want to do right now is have some of that creamy, salty cheese that this is just gonna cut right through and pair super, super, super well with. So, so Blanc, high acid, pink grapefruit, little bit of grassiness going on. Uh, if it's New Zealand, I said it'd be maybe a little bit more tropical fruits, but this is classic. There's no oak here, there's no caramel, there's no butterscotch, there's no uh, smoky wood, there's no popcorn. None of these flavors are in this wine. This is either not done in oak, so it's done in steel tank or cement, uh, or if it is oak, this is a big barrel that is at least a few years old where it is not imparting any flavor on this wine. Anyway, low 20s. Wow, a lot of salivation. <clears throat> wine two. Chardonnay, ABC, anything but Chardonnay. If you haven't heard that before, then maybe you're laughing, I don't know. So this is made in California. I'm not a huge California Chardonnay fan. I like Chardonnay's more restrained, kind of going back to the, the Sauve Blanc style where I also said that I don't prefer the New Zealand. I would rather have something from Sancerre, something in France. Um, Chardonnay is, is a great made all over the world. Everywhere is making Chardonnay. They're making it oaked, they're making it unoaked. This is a typical style you're gonna find anywhere for, for 10, 15, 20 bucks, more expensive. This is, this is an oak bomb. This is tons and tons and tons and tons of oak. I don't even know if there's fruit going on in this, but it's very popular. And one of the things with Chardonnay, if it's an oaked Chardonnay, it's one of the easiest grapes to pick out because if you smell that oak, good chance what you have is Chardonnay. So let's, uh, let's see what's going on. This is made in California, toasted head. Rinse this glass a little bit, get rid of some of that. So Blanc. Something not quite perfectly musical about how these glasses ring. I can actually smell the butter and the caramel from here, from, from this pour. It is so strong, that oak smell. Uh, deeper in color, just a little bit, not, not too dark in color, but it's picking up from those oak barrels. These are either um, brand new oak barrels or they're small oak barrels or a combination of those two things. It is imparting a lot of oak onto this wine. Wow. So... I'm getting lots of candied apricots here, lots of, lots of fig, lots of date, lots of sweet 
candied dry kind of fruits and then tons of this popcorn caramel butterscotch kind of flavor going on and that's coming from from the oak this is very typical what i think of usually when i think of california napa valley chardonnay this is what i'm picturing it to smell like um, now you can get Chardonnays in Burgundy, for example, where either the oak is maybe a little bit more restrained, maybe a little bit less of that butterscotch and more of kind of stove cooked popcorn, more nuttiness. And that's coming from the type of oak. The, the, the barrels that they're buying will be toasted in a different way. You can also get unoaked Chardonnay if you're in, let's say, a, a region in Burgundy called Chablis. Um, that's a different style as well. But this is something that most people are probably familiar with. And we're talking again, Hallmark grapes, blind tests. This is something, you know, so Blanc's a very standard grape. Chardonnay's a standard grape. This is a very typical style for you to see and get to know. Definitely not as much acidity going on here, less salivation. It tasted cleaner and fresher than I thought it was going to be, but still that oak is really what's dominating here. I'm not even getting almost any fruit on the palate. So not my favorite wine, but we're not talking about wine reviews right now. We're just talking about the hallmarks. And so for now, if we're talking about kind of this mid-level cheap-ish, $15-ish a bottle Chardonnay, and it's in that California style and it's oaked, you can expect that butterscotch and that caramel. Those are hallmarks that you should be looking for, get familiar with. If you smell that, it's not a Riesling, it's not a, it's not a Sauv Blanc, uh, it's not Pinot Grigio, it's, it's gonna be Chardonnay. So, let's keep moving. Yeah, slide these over this way. <clears throat> okay, a grape that if you're just getting into wine, you're probably less familiar with. Gewürz demeanor. Put this here for now. Really great grape. Really, really aromatic. Really easy to learn. A real, real crowd pleaser. If, if all you're drinking right now is Chardonnay and Pinot Grigio, this is definitely a wine you want to check out. How Canadian was that accent? Was that out? Very, uh, very Canadian. All my American friends make fun of me when I say out, or house, or about. Anyway, Gewürz demeanor. So this is made uh, a little bit in Ontario where I'm from, but lots of Gewürz demeanor made in Alsace, lots of Gewürz demeanor being made in Germany, in Austria. Fantastic grape, very, very, very aromatic. The first time you smell it, you go, whoa, what is going on in this glass? And sure enough, jumps right out, clean, fresh. Now, I remember when I was first getting into wine, my first thought was cleaning product, something bathroom cleaning product and then that brought me into kind of that dried flowers potpourri uh, grandma's perfume and later i realized that the specific fruit the specific tropical dried flower and fruit territory that we're really in here is kind of candied orange and lychee territory this is a really aromatic grape and what's interesting about this wine is it smells like it's going to be super sweet it sounds it, 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 it almost smells like it's going to be a dessert wine and when you try it It is very floral, it is very fruity on the palate, but it actually doesn't finish that sweet. It, it finishes pretty dry. <clears throat> this may be slightly off dry, but it definitely has a lot of that lychee dried flower, potpourri kind of thing going on. It repeats on the palate. This is nothing like the Chardonnay and it's nothing like the Sauve Blanc. And it's a grape that you can easily, in a lineup, blind after only having it a few times, pick this out. Now, if someone's being a jerk, they could put a grape uh, from Argentina called Torrantes. They could stick that in there and it smells pretty similar to Gewürz demeanor, but doesn't really taste anything like it. I got tripped up on a blind test on that once, but I've never made that mistake again. It was when I was starting out. Anyway, Gewürz demeanor, really hard to spell. I still can't spell it. I have to use spell check every time. It's really complicated. It doesn't have to be so complicated, but it is. G-E-W-U-R-Z-Z-T-R-A-M-I-N-E-R, Alsace, German, we'll all have those hallmarks, very aromatic, go check it out. Our last wine that we've got here is a German Riesling, 
Riesling made also all over the world in different styles, dry, sweet, late harvest, but we're not talking about dessert wines right now, we're just talking about Hallmark grapes. Now the particular Riesling that I have here is actually a off dry, medium sweet Riesling. So there is some sugar going on here, but the Hallmarks are still gonna be the same. Slide everyone over, make a little bit more room here. So <clears throat> German Riesling, Riesling made in Alsace, which is the border of France and Germany. It's technically on the French side. Made in Germany, made in Austria, made in Ontario, a um, few other places. One of my favorite grapes, probably my favorite white grape actually. So what do we got going on here? An oaked, lighter in color. What's the smell? So Riesling for me, the skin of the grape typically gives off a bit of this petrol note, and sometimes it can be on the palate, sometimes it can be um, on the nose when you're smelling it, and people wonder why smell and taste. It's important to smell because maybe you smell something that you don't taste, or maybe the other way, you taste something but you don't smell it. So it's, it's important to do both those things, and it kind of gives you hints on what could be in that glass. Is there oak, is there no oak? And here I'm getting a ton of that, that petrol rubber kind of note. Now in this particular, case it's coming through if i were to guess something i would say that this is kind of a tennis ball there is a you know that those, those cans of like a fresh set of green tennis balls and you pop the top up and that smell that's been bottled up in there for a long time just kind of jumps out that's a ton of what i'm getting on the nose here that i would guess for sure that this is a riesling i, I don't know what else this this could be this has to be a riesling i mean i know it is because it says that i get that but it smells like typical riesling and a lot of apple juice going on here. Now this one is sweet, so it finishes sweet, but it can also have an apple or an apricot kind of quality that finishes a little bit sour, but I always think of apple juice when I was a kid, when I taste Riesling, and if I get that petrol note, that kind of rubber or something, a shower curtain, a beach ball, whatever it is, I know it sounds crazy if you've never heard it before, but when I smell that and then I taste that apple juice, this is where I'm going, I'm going Riesling, in my blind, this is Riesling. And if it's sweeter, I'm gonna guess Germany. And if it's drier, I'll usually guess Alsace, but you can get Trocken, you can get dry Riesling made in, in Germany. You can get it from all over. It's really, uh, who knows? It's important though, again, as I said, not about did you guess, <clears throat> in this case, four out of four. What's important is, are you guessing right? Are you putting down the right notes? Are you thinking the right things? Is your, is your palate detecting the right Acidity, is it detecting minerality? Good acidity, good minerality, balancing out that sweetness. Is it is it picking up that there was kind of a petrol note and apple juice going on here versus this is oaked and has that butterscotch and caramel and the Sancerre is getting that pink grapefruit, high acid finish, uh, or are we getting Gewürztraminer where we're into lychee and floral and very aromatic. These are four wines, they're all very different. I highly recommend get together with some friends if you've never done this before. Go buy these four wines. It doesn't have to be these ones. Just go buy these grapes from these regions. You can ask your, your shop owner, someone who works at the store, you know, is the, is the Chardonnay oaky? If you want to just get to know that flavor, just say, I'm looking for an oaky Chardonnay. It doesn't have to be expensive, 15 bucks. Can I get something from Sancerre, some So Blanc made in France? Can I get a, a Riesling? Now, if you want to get one from Alsace, It'll probably be dry or, or not as sweet as something like this. This is a medium sweet German Riesling, but they're still gonna have those notes and sit around together, talk about them. Can you guys pick out these notes that we've talked about? Let me know and till next episode.